Uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Scott McGann, and we're doing our we uh, health department here in Falmouth doing our weekly uh, update for COVID-19. Uh, today's August 7th. Uh, the Falmouth Health Department's phone number is 495-7485. Uh, our email is health at falmouthma.gov. And you can visit falmouthmass.us uh, for this presentation and for some, and all your COVID information. Um, as of today, uh, there's 237 cases of COVID-19 since its beginning in March 19th. These are confirmed tests that are actually uh, are confirmed PCR tests. Uh, about six confirmed cases during the seven-day period from um, last week to today. Uh, we've had the two recent clusters that I mentioned last week, long-term care, which is doing very well, and thank goodness for that. Um, and then we had our lifeguard social activities resulting in the amplification of cases, uh, which was essentially uh, was uh, about a week or so ago. Um, and so both of those had a lot of, to do with some of the cases that we've had, and we are getting our sort of random uh, cases, uh, cases that come up individually uh, as well. Um, over 90% of all the cases are no longer in isolation. And we found with about 13, 13.3% of all cases, we expect to be about 14. And the VNA and the, uh, the contact trace and collaborative at the state and state DPH, uh, with, you know, with my support at the health department with the VNA, continue to do the isolation and contact tracing on the cases. Our weekly case trend, if you can see from about uh, June to early July, you saw that was less than 10 a week. Uh, you see that we've had that spike with the, with the nursing home and the lifeguard uh, situation over the last couple of weeks. We're down along that six per week um, under 10 trend. Hopefully we maintain it. Um, but that's kind of where we're at this week. Um, many, several of those cases were, you know, in, in, inter-family inter or some new cases that did pop up. Um, that's been normal that we've been averaging several newer cases of, you know, just sort of just come out of the blue. They're not related to a cluster or it's not related to anything in particular, and that does happen, and that's uh, sort of where we're at um, with our weekly case trend. Uh, our total new cases, um, you can see again, you know, late March, early April with a, with a very fast increase. Again, in May with the nursing homes, we had the nursing home in the cluster last week. Um, that caused that, and hopefully we can level that off um, with good social distancing and the face masks and all the things that we've been doing now for about five, five and a half, about five or so months. Um, in terms of the state, the state dashboard is updated daily at four o'clock, uh, except for Wednesdays. They're usually not till about 5.30 or 6 because they do a weekly update. The weekly update gives you information about individual towns and some more detail, uh, but generally around four o'clock you'll get that. And the state numbers for yesterday was 162 new cases with 32 deaths. That's been averaging about 150 to as much as 300 in a given day. The deaths have been as low as under 10 to 30 in the low 30s. Our total deaths have been uh, 8470. Uh, we're averaging some over 10,000 tests per day, uh, which is good. A total number of t uh, molecular tests given are 1.6 million since the beginning. Our, the current status are still in the same colors in the in progress or positive trend. Um, had a call this week with the state uh, that we get twice a week, and you know they've noticed that there's been an uptick. Uh, they expected an uptick when we went to phase three, and they're analyzing the numbers and the data now to determine whether that was what was expected by having some more things open, uh, especially on the inside, and they haven't uh, decided whether that has been uh, what's been expected or not, so that's still pending. And that's why we're still in phase three, step one, and not necessarily back to two or anything of that nature. Um, so I think there's still, the jury's still out on what, uh, what the, the increase, the recent increase, and whether it's substantial enough to do anything. So that's still pending. Um, this is from the county. It's a little old, but they haven't updated this yet. It shows that Barnstable County in general, as it relates to the state, is doing better in the healthcare system readiness category and also in the contact tracing capabilities. So we're doing slightly better the state on those two. Um, this hasn't been updated yet in a while. Uh, this is a, a new slide. This is the daily cases. So as you go down, you can see in uh, the June to early D July numbers were low. Then you saw the uptick in the mid to late July into early August. But it does show a trend that it tends to go back down. So hopefully that, you know, some of the things, the parties, the clusters, the, you know, the a lot of people here in the Cape this time of year and things of that nature, perhaps some relaxing of people's uh, diligence on it or, or so forth has resulted in, in that blip. And hopefully that, that is a, 
a trend to stay back down into that four, three, two, zero range for daily cases. Total number of cases in Barstable is about the, just under 1,800 at 1,778 with 157 deaths. Um, if you look at the state trends, if you've heard me before, one of the key metrics is uh, percent positivity. Um, we were down as low as 1.7 in earlier July. We've gone up to as high as uh, actually of last week of 2.2. Uh, we're down at 2.1 and had, seems to be steady in that 2.2 to 2.1 2 range, 2.2. Um, that's concerning, so that's one of the metrics they look at to see if that uh, continues upward. If it continues upward, you may see us going back to a different lower phase number, like a 2. Um, if, it, if it's within what their wheelhouse or what they think they wanted to have for, for that, um, they may not change it at all. So again, the lower that number, the better. Uh, the three-day hospitalization rate has been pretty flat, uh, slightly up over the last few days. Um, not to a point where it's really high, but it definitely has been a little bit sort of, I would say, sort of flatlined around that 375 to 380 range, 360 to 380 range. Uh, the average deaths have been hovering in the teens. We're in the low teens now in the 15, 12 of the last couple of days. 14 Between the early August would be 14, 15, and 12 uh, daily deaths. Um, that number was at a much higher rate. It was in the 20s uh, back early in, earlier in, in the month. Uh, cases by county, you can see that Barnstable County, um, 1783. The slides are a little bit different in days, so you see a little bit different from a couple of slides ago, but relatively the same. Um, you don't see a huge uptick. I do see it more in the, uh, the if you look at the Suffolk County and the orange, uh, you do see it had gone up a little bit more. Um, we're still relatively flat for our current, if you look at that, that number. We does not see us having a spike at that point. And hopefully we can keep that and maintain it. Uh, testing and incidence rates. Um, if you look at the right-hand column, that's our testing rate. You can see that Falmouth in the, um, in the elbow over here is, uh, is showing that we have a, uh, a robust testing uh, frequency. We're testing at a higher rate than maybe a lot of our surrounding towns are. That's good. Um, our percent positivity, our incident rate, or the rate at which it's occurring, we're in the darker phase. A couple of weeks ago, this would have been in a light, blue, light purple color. Um, but since we've had those two incidents, that uh, has resulted in us having a higher uh, incident rate. A little bit easier way to look at it, on 722, our case count was 208. Our total number of tests was 1093, and our percent positivity was 0.37. That was the lowest. So you have issues at, at one of our nursing, long-term care facilities. You have a group of um, younger kids at, at you know, at the, the lifeguard situation that we had brought us to 229, now we have a 14 day count of 22. It brings our percent positivity up to 2.37%, all right? Which is slightly higher than the state at that time. I think the state was 1.7 something. That was the first time that we, since this data was being kept that we were higher. Um, now as, as one of those weeks drop off and this week has not been as heavy in the cases, our percent positivity goes down to 1.15. Uh, so we're down below the state's average for the 14 days of 1.82. Um, with 12 cases, six of them being this week. So hopefully we continue the trend to get down under, uh, in that point five or less range would be very good. Okay, so that's, um, that's where we are with uh, percent positivity. Um, as far as hospitalizations, this is state numbers. It, since July 22nd, we've gone up 52. Falmouth Hospital itself has been really good over the last week. I haven't seen anything over the last week or so. Cape Cod Hospital has been two or less in the hospital as hospitalizations. It tells you that um, well, with our, with our long term care facility, that it didn't, it didn't affect them to have to go to the hospital, that one issue that we had. And also says that um, the people that have gotten it over the last uh, couple of weeks have not required hospitalization. Uh, the state numbers are still down 419 from June 26th, uh, but up 52 from July 22nd. So that trend is going in the wrong direction. If it's enough of a wrong direction, that's for the state to decide. Um, ICU and intubations are up four from July 22nd, but down 111 from June 26th, and plus one from July 22nd on intubated, those are on the vent, and minus 70 from June 26th. So the trend is still in a good direction, just hopefully that that last, you know, that we're not starting to tick back up on that. So that's something to watch. And again, you can get this uh, on a daily basis every at four o'clock every day on the state's website. Um, our long-term care, the percentage of deaths uh, in Massachusetts, according to long-term care, is two-thirds, so two-thirds of all deaths have been associated with long-term care in the state. Uh, these cases, numbers are the same as last week. We've had 14 deaths for our long-term care, um, and uh, 
you know, quite a few cases, um, and hopefully that um, doesn't continue. And we have good, good luck in our nursing homes, long-term care facilities. Uh, COVID testing, drive through still at the Falmouth Hospital. Yes, there are a lot of delays with COVID testing right now. There's, uh, d there's uh, a lack of supplies, or, and also the labs are overwhelmed. And uh, so there's been a lot of complaints uh, I've been getting at the health department about how long it's taking to get a test. I apologize, there's not much I can, you know, the health department can do about speeding it up. Um, but as far as the, the, the confirmed style test, the PCR test, which I'll talk about in a second, um, you still get that at Falmouth Hospital. Uh, our in Barnstable, as far as I know, it's still at Cape Cod Community College and it hasn't moved over to the hospital, but it's supposed to during the summer. Uh, hours Monday through Saturday, 9 to 5. Your physician has to set up, they set up an appointment through your physician using this dedicated call center. That is the gold standard uh, PCR test. You can also get PCR tested, at, I believe, at East Falmouth CVS. There's some walk-in clinics. And I was told that the Community Health Center of Cape Cod and Mashpee also does it. They're looking to expand as well into Falmouth uh, to give us more opportunity for testing. And you also can go to the mass.gov COVID-19 testing. A little bit about tests, I had this uh, slide in last week. Uh, we're looking at the far right. The PCR test is what, we, is what the DPH considers a confirmed case. The only way to be a confirmed case is through the PCR, detects the viral DNA. It's taking greater than 24 hours. It's taking um, up to uh, several days at least to get a result, which is always a problem. But it does tell you whether you have an active or recent infection. It's the only one that tells you you truly have an active infection. And that is what we call the gold standard. Um, there's the antibody test on the left, which is telling you that you use a blood test to show that you have antibodies that's indicating that you had a previous infection. So, for example, if you were sick in February or early March and you couldn't get a test and you had all the same symptoms that you might have thought COVID, you can get an antibody test to tell you whether you had it before. Um, Mass DPH considered these a probable and not a confirmed case. And in the middle, what we had recently are these rapid test results that are some of these, uh, some facilities are giving uh, an antigen test, which detects antigens indicating could be a pa mainly a pass, but it can also tell you a current infection. It does have an error rate, not nearly as accurate as a PCR, but it is rapid, whereas the PCR is taking several days. Um, DPH also considers those a probable. So make sure you know what kind of test you're getting. And um, so, you know, the confirmed cases are just going to be the PCR, the nasal swabs that are going to go out to a lab and take, you know, take a little bit of time. Um, I haven't changed the slide in several, several uh, presentations. We're still in phase three, step one. Um, if you're looking about, I've had a lot of questions about outdoor gatherings. It's covered under the governor's order number 44. And um, you, if you have questions about that, you can always contact the health department. Um, gyms, some, some sports, uh, youth and adult sports guidance, uh, human service programs, indoor long-term care visitation, some casinos, indoor dining, uh, things of that nature are part of phase three and step one. Um, back to the basics, the social distancing and the face coverings. Again, we need to continue being diligent with social distancing and face coverings, hand washing, hand sanitizing, following the guidance if you are quarantined or isolated. Also quarantining upon arrival in locations with higher rates. Again, starting August 1st is new travel guidance requiring a 14-day 14 quarant quarantine from most out-of-state areas. Rhode Island was just added to the list that you would need to. Um, so that is um, something that needs to be followed. If you're also a Massachusetts resident heading to one of those areas, you would need to quarantine when you come back. Um, avoiding gatherings, parties, especially indoors and without social distancing is important. Staying home when ill, having any of the symptoms of COVID. Um, and if you have a business or, or you're some sort of an entity, nonprofit, there's state guidance out there. If you have direct questions, you can ask the health department. We'll try to work through it for you. Obviously, the last thing we want to do is undo the hard work that we've been do that we've done, especially the good numbers that we've had in late June and into July. Uh, we want to keep this at bay, especially with schools opening, and so our social distancing and face covering requirements and the guidance and stuff like that still needs to be followed. Um, and um, you know, we do a lot of enforcement here at the health department. We do a lot of follow-ups. Um, I have people dedicated to going out and following up on complaints. Um, we do as many as we can, as humanly possible, as quickly as possible. Um, and we try to work with businesses to follow the guidance and give them give them guidance on how to how to accomplish um, the different things that may do, such as, you know, um, putting down arrows and things of that nature for one way directions and so forth. And that's the kind of stuff that we've been working on. Um, but it's still obviously still important. 
Um, if we can keep our case counts down under that, you know, two or three a week, I think we're doing pretty well. I think we just don't want to have those blips where we go 15 and 20 or 22 in every given week. And so as a recap, the state metrics are a slight increase. The data is still being analyzed to determine if it's expected for phase three. So I think they're waiting a little bit to see as the numbers keep coming in every day, whether there needs to be a tweaking of the phase three or what phase three expectation that we're meeting it and not having counts that have gone beyond what they expected for phase three. So that's still uh, in limbo. Falmouth and Cape cases increased primarily from two cluster events over the last you know, several couple of weeks. We did level off a bit this week. Hopefully it, can, it maintains itself. Uh, we're current, again, again, currently in phase three, step one. Um, so that's what I have for the week. Any direct questions, you just give the health department a call, and we'll get back to you as soon as you can. Thank you.